there is more to shape layers than you have seen already in this section we will focus on expanding your skills and your knowledge about the shape layers how to use the contents add and how to manipulate all the properties that you can merge together and put them together to obtain some amazing shapes like these ones and how to manipulate the fields you will also learn how you can compound shapes and create you know an animation in a single layer as you can see here how to create a complex shape group you notice we have only one shape layer here that has the whole bear in it and how to use the repeater to create some animated backgrounds how to use the repeater to create burst elements and how to use the merge pass to create a compound shape or a complex shape like this one also how to transform your characters into shapes so you can manipulate them with the wiggle transform and other things that you can do so welcome to this section be attentive it's going to become a bit more complex but understanding shape layers and understanding how to use content in shape layers is very important i'll see you in the next lecture hi guys and welcome to this new section and this new lecture it's all about shapes now we want to understand the shape layers more in depth and understand how to manipulate shape layers and how to add and compound shapes this is live with you from aeschoolonline.com usually to create shapes and to create the shape layer we come to the toolbar choose our shape tool click and drag to create a shape we can obviously add the number and re reduce them and we have our first shape here for example in the timeline a shape layer has been created that has a content and a poly star the poly star here you can see it has many different parameters you have the poly star path actually this is the shape itself this poly star one we call it a group i will explain this to you later on in shape groups but you have the poly star and the poly star has its own parameters you can change from star to polygon for example or we can keep it a star you can change the number of points the way you want them for example we give it 15 and we can change its position the position here is the position relative to the anchor point of the shape layer for example if i use my selection tool and double click on the layer i have the shape layer here and we can see its anchor point in the between let's increase the inner radius and we see it very nicely so you have the anchor point of the shape here if i move in this position under the polystar i will be changing the position of the shape itself that is polystar path one according to its own anchor point we most probably want to keep this one to zero unless you have some very specific reasons why you want to move it from its anchor point also the rotation it is rotating on its anchor point and you are rotating the polystar path which in that case is the polystar one for now now you have the inner and outer radius we have seen how and you have the roundness and outer roundness fine so this polystar one has its own transforms so if you click here you will have very many transforms according to the polystar or the polystar path if you look at it the transform here will animate polystar one it's even written so if you open here you can now move the position now this is the trick the position here is a relative position for the anchor of the shape layer for example if you move it you will notice that you're not moving the anchor point of the polystar path you're moving the shape according to the anchor point of the shape layer shape layers are always created in the middle of your composition not the polystar not the polystar path only the shape layer it has its anchor point in the middle and this position here is about where is the shape compared to the anchor point of the shape layer if you put it to zero then your shape is in the middle of the shape layer which is also in the middle of the composition and then your shape here is in the middle of the composition and that's the way to center a shape in the middle of the composition or in the middle of its own layer you do not come and open the proportional grid or i don't know tile and action grid and start putting you know pointing here and try to open from here that's not the right way the right way is to come here in the shape transform or the polystyle transform in our case and make the position zero zero the scale now here is a scale you notice also 
the stroke is scaling up and down it's becoming smaller and bigger i will undo that twice fine you have an additional one which is this hue pretty nice you can do quite some animations and you have rotation let's create a rotation only for this polystar path one or the polystar so i will use transform polystar one i will keyframe the rotation come after three seconds and make it one or two and then you notice that your shape is rotating it has an animation but your shape layer did not move you have zero animations here cool that's one now we can come and create new shapes inside the shape layer so i have polystar here i will come to content and create for example a rectangle let's make a rectangle just here so notice now my rectangle is here i can move it and put it in the middle of course i have a rectangle one that's the group inside there is a rectangle path one it has a size i can size it up and down anywhere i want it has a position of course relative to its own anchor point this time and it has the transform rectangle one where you have the position according to the layer the shape layer you can just center it in between and you have your skew and rotation and so on we can also animate the rotation here and uh, if you make it zero then we come here we make it minus two for example so now what happens we animating the shapes but we animated inside their own path so we are really not touching the layer yet so you notice how powerful is this let's create another shape inside we click on our shape layer and we choose polygon that will do come in the middle somehow and try to draw our polygon like this cool we can move it down that's fine now we have another polystar if you open we have the polystar path and it's a polygon not a star and we keep it polygon we have the number of points that we can change exactly the same and we have its rotation now notice here you're rotating according to the anchor point of the polystar one cool let's put back this one to zero and we want to change its fill let's make it darker or let's take a totally new color good and let's remove a stroke so notice i did not change anything in the shape layer i changed in polystar 2 now polystar 2 also we can give it an animation for example we come to polystar transform and this let's use the rotation again we keyframe the rotation we can come back here and give it for example minus one only so now we have animated all our shapes here you are they are all turning yet we did not animate our uh, shape layer so let's go and animate our shape layer we will come to the transform here let's stop the animation we keyframe the position and the scale for example scale it at uh, let's say 10 percent so we can see it and then use our selection tool hold it and bring it here that's we wanted to start from here after three seconds for example we get it back to 100 in the scale and of course we want the position to come over here cool so now we have animated almost everything that's what's happening we have three shape groups that are animated inside a single shape layer and in the next lecture we will learn how to create a shape layer from its initial stage hi guys and welcome to this new lecture this is about shapes and we continue creating shape groups and understanding more about shapes and what you can do and what you cannot do of course this is loi with you from aeschoolonline.com and i hope you're enjoying this course and if you have any questions i repeat it please put it in the question and answer section in the dashboard of this course i'll be very happy to answer you and you really want to upgrade your skills so please ask any questions that you have fine let's start creating a layer new and i will create a shape layer so when a shape layer is created there is inside the contents and there is the transform you notice the content is empty so we start adding content to the content i will come to the add button here click on it and i will add a group so remember before i told you there is a group polystar 2 is a group now we are going to start creating a really a group 
So we created the, our group and inside the group we have only transform and we don't have anything else. Let's add, let's select our group and not our content. We select our group and we add, for example, an ellipse. So here I have an ellipse that doesn't have any color. You see, it's not there. So let's make it bigger. But then it doesn't have any stroke or any fill. We will come to the group and add a fill. The default fill for me, I think it's red. I don't like it because I know it doesn't show well on your screen. Let's take a fill that will show better. So the fill here has been positioned inside the group and not inside the path. This is important that you notice. So you can have several fields inside the group. You can have several fields inside the contents, but you cannot have a fill inside a path. Also, let's add a stroke. We will come to stroke and we add the stroke. Let's increase the stroke size. Okay, this stroke size is very big. Now notice something important here. If you select your shape here, you have the path that is around the shape. Of course, it's an ellipse. Now notice your stroke is halfway inside the shape and halfway outside. This is called stroke over fill. You can rearrange that and put fill over stroke. Now only half of your stroke is showing. So it will draw the fill, of course, according to the shape path and then draws behind the stroke. So that's the way it works, fill over stroke or stroke over fill, if you hear that. Now in group one, we have transformed group one and we added a shape, fine. Let's reduce our stroke here. I will come and reduce it. And then let's come to the ellipse path here and make it bigger. Notice the stroke is not changing. So I did not scale up the group. I just changed the size of the ellipse path. I will come to group and add another ellipse, for example. And this ellipse, of course, is going to take the fill and the stroke of what is set under it. I will come to ellipse path 2. I have position. Remember that position is relative to the anchor point of the whole group. Cool. So we put it here. Fine. And then I will duplicate this one. I have path 3. Also, I can play with the position. Position it on this side. Now, I want you to notice the effect of fill over stroke. So if you look at it now here, you have like a bear with some ears, but if you take the field, put it under the stroke, then you have all the strokes showing. And this is not nice here in this case. Let's add in the group another shape here. We will add, for example, a rectangle. And if you open the rectangle here, we can position it right in the right place. And uh, we make the size a bit smaller. Let's uh, position also the, or change the size to make it big on the y-axis, fine. And we have its roundness, we will give it some roundness. You notice that the rectangle path one here is under the big ones, the other ellipses. So I will take it and move it up. So now it's seen. Yet it still have the stroke and the feel of the other one, so nothing will appear. What I will do, I will come and add another stroke or another fill will do and everything became red but if i take this fill and put it under the rectangle one only the rectangle one the above has, is affected if you open your fill here it says below previous in the same group previous there is no previous fill so it's below in the same group so it will affect everything that is above it and this one also, the second field, is also below previous in the same group. The previous is field 2, and it will affect everything below the previous, below the field 2, in the same group, of course. Now you notice that After Effects telling you about groups. So, I will come to rectangle 2, or the path of the rectangle. I will duplicate it, come to its position, and move it to this side. Okay, let's move it differently and let's move it on this side. Fine. So let's add a nice smile now. We come to group one, we click and we get a, an ellipse. Let's get an ellipse. So that ellipse is very below. So we take it up and put it up here. Cool. We come to the position and put it down. And we change its size. We remove the link and we make it uh, cool. Right, so now you have a nice bear, of course, that you can totally animate. Let's notice what we have done. We have the ellipse 4 
that is it has its size its position of course you can animate the position of ellipse 4 for example if you click here and move a bit and the guy is moving his mouse down and then another one is moving his mouse up something like this and then you can animate it so the mouse will go up and down very slowly very nice cool that's the animation of a path itself using its parameters here all its properties size and position if you come to another one like if you come to rectangle you will have for example size and roundness you can animate the roundness and so on so now we created a group here that has all the elements that we need with the fill and stroke now we can have the transform for the whole group notice the scaling now i'm scaling everything i'm not scaling the layer this is the group for example and i can scale the layer let's say we want to add a body so let's make it smaller cool and then we can click on it and put it up here come to the shape layer now we have group one here remember and come to the uh, tool and let's add let's use an ellipse and we can just create his body like this move it in the middle put it under yeah, something like this i will take the ellipse one which is the group here i will rename it body and of course here i can come and add the legs to the body and so on and work on it let's add the legs i will come to body itself add a, an ellipse i will move now the ellipse here and uh, bring it to the side sorry to the side here okay down cool i will duplicate the ellipse and do the same bring it this side no this side okay for example that's beautiful and then we play the trick of stroke over fill and fill over stroke we put the fill over the stroke and you have your nice teddy bear here that now you animate the whole teddy bear is in one single shape layer that you can actually animate let's open position for example for the shape layer we keyframe it here we go up the bear comes here and after some time the bear come here and then it can come over here of course we have a path let's take it down and then at the end for example it comes in the middle of the comp let's run a preview so notice what's happening the bear has been created just in one single shape layer and this is extremely powerful because you can create your bears you can create your teddy bears and you can create a lot of shapes that you can put in one shape layer and animate them yet you can create animations for every single item or details inside the bear and animate for example the ears you can come to the ears and animate them cool see you in the next lecture and i hope this was extremely useful for you and you learned a lot about shapes in the next lecture we will compound or we will work with complex shapes and look at all that we haven't looked at here like the merge pass offset and so on see you then hi guys and welcome to this new lecture in this lecture we are still in shapes and i want to bring to your attention a certain manipulation or certain tricks that you can use with shapes that will really change the way you create shapes so we have rectangle ellipse and so on but then if you combine them you will obtain enigmatic shapes i would say and you can manipulate them so don't rush to outside after effects to create your shapes or your path and bring them in you can really work them out here let's create this animation or something like this in fact okay we delete that shape layer Let's create a star we long click and we get the star here click in the middle somewhere and open the star so now this is the last star i did the way i played with the polystar radiuses i will come to polystar the first thing i want to center it in the middle of the layer so it's in the middle of the composition of course we come to transform polystar one and in the position we write zero zero and it's in the middle of the composition and its own layer let's open the polystar and look at the properties that we have we have the number of points you know that already okay let's make them let's say 20 we have the position relative to its own anchor point in the layer we have a rotation notice notice this is the only shape that has its rotation inside the path we have the inner radius that is the inner radius from inside it will grow it and you have the outer radius 
it will grow it from the outside so to shape a star or to increase the side of the star you will use the inner radius and the outer radius okay i guess this might seem simple to you but then you have the inner roundness you can click on the inner roundness and start getting some nice shapes here and there so you increasing the roundness of the spikes you have the outer roundness also and now you have a nice shape here i want to decrease and increase or decrease both of them increase and decrease and i want the radius for example the inner radius to be smaller and the outer radius even to be smaller here you are fine now let's create inside the group let's call this one group let's create a circle okay it's called ellipse but actually it will come as a circle and let's increase the size of the circle and notice what's going to happen to the fill now the fill here is being inversed so when there are two fills it will appear when there is one fill it will appear which will not appear or something like this fine you have here the reverse path that you can play with so you have another new shape here and it goes back to what we had and so on you can change your shapes also you can come and look at the fill here if i put them here and then come to from non-zero to even odd and you have another animation or another shape that you have created of course you want to come and tweak it make it nicer let's take it to the outside that's pretty cool fine let's add also another shape we come to the group we can add for example a polystar again but this polystar let's make it a polygon so i created a polygon inside of course you have the number of points that's cool that's no problem let's make it uh, a bit pressing control will not make it go very fast cool that's an hexagon the position of course and you have the rotation you can increase the outer radius cool now you have a very nice shape and you have the outer roundness i don't think i want to fiddle with it here okay but uh, something like this yeah we'll do in fact we can make it very round cool let's keep it that way now you have a very nice shape here let's come and add another star in the group or another ellipse in the group in the middle you see how it inverted the fill and let's grow it cool fine let's add in the group another polystar or a polygon in the center so we have our polygon here we can increase its inner radius let's increase the number of stars to six for example the corners and we increase the outer radius to touch cool and uh, that's cool we can make it the inner roundness a bit more yep and here you are you have a very nice shape that you can really animate from inside or outside now notice if you start animating the rotation for example here in the last polystar put it at zero come to four and give it two rotation if you run our animation this one is rotating by its own let's go to the rotation of the second one we keyframe it here we come back let's say if it works make it minus two let's see what we have now not bad not bad it's working let's go to the polystar this is the first one we put also we play with its rotation from inside come to the beginning make it two now it's gonna rotate the other way i think here you are so you have created an amazing shape that is contained only in one shape layer and you have used the path the reverse path here and you have used also the fill even odd or you can put it to the normal fill and you have a different shape let's put it to the normal fill and start changing these and you will see the fill of your shape is changing now you have something that eliminated almost half of it and if you play with it you can end up with things that are very beautiful let's take it back to the way it was and go to even odd and you have your shape thanks very much for listening so please come here and start fiddling around and adding uh, all kind of shapes from the add button you can add another path rectangles uh, different groups and so on i would like to tell you that this works inside a group if you go 
if you create several groups what's happening with the fill will not work obviously because the fill is inside a group and the uh, reverse path is inside the group itself thanks for listening i'll see you in the next lecture where we will work with the merge path hi guys and welcome to this new lecture about shapes and merge path this is loai with you from aschoolonline.com merge paths are a way to create compound or complex shapes and the best example i can give you here is to create a gear from there on you will understand merge path and you can go ahead and create very complex shapes the way you like them let's start by creating a star i will click on star tool and go and create my funny star as always we give it more spikes or corners come to the poly star here in the polystar path we increase the inner roundness that will be cool fine and uh, we want to adjust it in the middle center it we put the position in transform polystar to zero now it's in the middle of the layer or centered i will come to polystar let's say this one we'll call it a group and we say gear for example cool i will create here a ellipse and from this ellipse i want to start trimming the top spikes of the gear i will come to the ellipse here and scale it up decide where i want to scale it to trim the top exactly the top that will be fine now since i want to trim it these ones might not work with you at all now is a really different job so i will use the merge path i will come to the gear group and i will go and use the merge path the merge path came under the polystar and the ellipse and these are the two paths that will be merged i will come to add and use subtract for example so we have an interesting shape but it's not really what you want let's say about the intersect that is working it has chopped off these spikes and it's looking good the merge pass has here has made the intersection between the ellipse and the polystar i can put the polystar on top it's still the same effect i will come to the ellipse path and can make it bigger or smaller the way i would like to fine that's okay now i have a merge path so these two shapes have been merged and the last shape is contained inside the merge path let's add another ellipse because i want to remove these spikes here from the inside i'll take the ellipse and put it under my merge path fine now i will get the ellipse to be bigger for example over here and here you are i have now my kind of wheel i like this one pretty much now i want to add a hole in here to put a gear for example or a shaft inside so you have here a merge path one and ellipse path one these are two shapes i want to merge them in one to make a hole in the middle what i will do i will add another merge path and take it under the ellipse and just make it add or merge if i like it's the same so now my last final shape here or the shape path is everything that i can see i will come and add an ellipse in the middle and take it under the path and add another merge path under the ellipse you notice how it's coming so now i will make this one subtract so the small ellipse has been subtracted from merge path 2 that is everything above fine i will make my ellipse a bit bigger you have now a very nice gear that you can of course animate either from the gear group or from the layer let's animate it from the polystyle we can do that we keyframe the rotation and come after four seconds give it for example three and we run a ramp review so now you notice you have your gear that is turning extremely fast let's make it only one so we see it slowly here you are this is how you use a merge path so the concept of it is inside a group you can add merge path and use the four or five modes that you have here add subtract intersect and exclude intersection to create some very nice shapes this is one shape just by changing a single merge path of course you want to train on this you want to make sure that you know exactly how it works you can come now outside the group in the content add another shape for example and uh, a rectangle just for the sake of giving the example and make the rectangle a bit bigger okay 
let's put it like this just for the example it's not gonna look good at all we can use now a merge path under the rectangle and say for example uh, subtract so it's subtracting everything from the outside or we can say intersect and you can see the gear has been chopped off so the merge path can either be used inside the group or inside the content here and you can play with all its attributes merge paths are very useful and you can use them to create compound shapes thanks very much for listening and i hope you will use the merge path go to after effects and start playing with the merge path and see exactly what you can do now it's important that you collect all this information and you train yourself of using all the strategies that i gave in shapes here and i'm gonna give you much more thanks hi guys this is Loi with you from eschoolonline.com and in this lecture we are going to learn or start learning about some presets and some effects that are self-animating you don't need to put keyframes and you get this kind of effect this is the wiggle path and we are going to work on it let's try to replicate this animation we create a new composition just a blank one and the ordinary one and let's view it at we draw a rectangle we try to put it in the middle if you like and reduce the stroke maybe to six yeah that will do then i will come to the add here to introduce the wiggle path so you have very many of them we went through trim path and the merge and the offset now we're looking at the wiggle we'll put the wiggle now notice when you put the wiggle without any keyframe it's just animating by itself okay let's go to the wiggle itself the wiggle path inside the shape layer inside content and we have the size let's have a look at the rectangle here and look when we increase the size the size of the wiggles will be increased that's pretty cool and then if we increase the details the details of the wiggles will increase for example you see now you have something like the hospital things fun also we have the smoothness that's the point you know this is a rectangle so it has four corners so now the wiggle is different from every corner we can make it smooth and then the wiggle is very different it is very smooth it's not sharp at the corners if you increase the size you know it will also be very smooth let's put back the size to 10 and let's keep it not smooth but corners is much nicer then you have the wiggle per second the wiggle per second is the speed actually so you can increase it and then the speed of the wiggle is much much speedier let me make it bigger so you can see it and this is the speed and it's very speedy now not very practical let's put it back to two you can also put it back to 0 0.5 and to make it like dreamlike if you notice now it's very smooth you can reduce the size to seven or eight and smoothly running let's put back the speed to two let's look at correlation correlation is about how they are moving according to each other let's make them big and change the correlation to 100 percent you almost see they became identical all of them zero they are very different from each other a 50 percent correlation is quite nice let's remove it and you notice now they are not even moving at all it's just you know it's very different if you change correlation to 100 percent increase the size and put it to smooth you have a very nice animation here that will happen up down and so on okay it's just a variation let's put it to corner and let's put it back to 50 percent so we get this smoothness now temporal phase and spatial phase is like uh, how would i say it's about setting the preferences here how you want it to happen let's put the wiggle per second to zero and if you move the temporal it will tell you how it's going to happen in time you notice changing in time so that will be your starting point also you have the spatial and that will be your starting point but of course you can keyframe this to get jumps for example if i keyframe this two sorry this two then come to one second increase them or whatever value i give them come to two seconds then increase them again then you will have the animation that we didn't want to use keyframes for so now we are using keyframes to move your animation notice after that after the keyframes it doesn't move let's remove these ones and return the values to zero 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 and zero fine so let's do our animation we remove the keyframes from here 
what we want to have is the size we're gonna reduce it to for example 12 will do here we can see it okay I'll make this smaller even though I have to scroll up and down and it's fit to 100 percent and uh, the details let's make them less let's say nine the details the size is okay so we have this animation that's going on uh, we need to increase the speed sorry so we'll increase the speed to five that will do and you have it okay you can increase the details and you can come and play with it the way you want okay let's increase also the size to make it more accentuated and here you have you have a very nice wiggle a bit speedy but it will work let's put it at three here you are now you can also wiggle text but before you wiggle text you need to create shapes from text and that's what we will do now we'll stop the animation come and say wiggling now you could use any font you want it will work okay we put it in the middle let's make it bigger okay and then there is an option here create shapes from text if you choose it it will create another layer this is a shape layer and it will close the eye on wiggling that you cannot see the text anymore you still can use it but it's on if you twirl down the shape layer in the content you will find that there is a shape or a path for each of the characters or the letters here some of them even like the j has two of them one is the inside and one is the outside fine we don't care about this what we care is to add a wiggle path so adding the wiggle path now we can animate let's play preview it is quite animating but it's like very very sharp let's zoom in and make it smaller for example we reduce the details and we reduce the size okay i guess this is fine let's go back to 100 percent and here you are you have your animation cool that's very nice now how do we introduce this there are several ways to introduce this for the shape layer the best way to introduce it is to add a trim path and in the trim path here we can start keyframe the start at 100 percent go after a few seconds and uh, give it a zero percent let's go back here and make it 100 percent cool so now you have your path coming in and wiggling now you can also draw your path and start wiggling for example let's reduce the time here and we come to the wiggle here we want our layer or our rectangle to start wiggling after it has opened so from here for example cool i can do several things the best way to do it is use the wiggle per second and i will keyframe the wiggle per second now this is interesting the keyframe here is a hold keyframe is not a bezier it means it takes this value at this time and nothing else we can come back before give it the value zero we have zero we have now two hold keyframes that's pretty interesting it means it will jump into speed and it will not gradually grow into speed of i guess this is a computing thing so we'll it will draw and then move on let's move this two on the side okay that's pretty far just say like this so now we start it draws normally and then start wiggling cool of course you can come and adjust it also you can decide that it will draw straight so the size of the wiggling i will keyframe it to zero come here for example i can also keyframe it again so it stays at zero and remove the first keyframe of course and then come here when it has drawn or started we give the size like it was 15. so here you are it will draw normally then start wiggling and that's a much better way to introduce with the wiggle not just to draw the your circle when it's wiggling that would not be nice of course we can come and do the same for the wiggling characters and introduce the wiggling after a certain time let's open the wiggle it's over here we can also open the wiggle here for the characters using the trim path i will come to content add and i will add a trim path for all of them of course now we can come to the trim path keyframe the end at zero percent and then go after a few seconds when it comes here we make it 100 percent so they are all coming together 
That's not exactly what we want. We want them to come each one after the other. So I'll do three multiple shapes, I will say individually. Let's look at our animation now. So the circle comes and the trim path of the character is drawn. Maybe we make it longer to give it more. So if we wiggle here, we see that it's starting and it's cool. It's pretty nice that way. This is not something that you can use everywhere, but it's quite nice. Let me show you something else that you will really want to know. I will make, create a new composition. Same, same. Then I will come and draw just a line from beginning till the end, for example. That's cool. And we give it six. Let's give it even three. I will introduce the wiggle path here. I will come to the add here and add the wiggle path. I come to the wiggle path, for example, give it a lot. See? And then the details give it a lot of details. That's cool. Then make it smooth if I want. So here you are, you have the wiggle wiggling very nicely. Now, this is pretty interesting. Let's double click here to create a shape and make it very thick. Something like this and make this one smaller. So you have like a screen if you'd like to, you know, something that's wiggling inside a screen. But that's pretty nice. Let's make this one move. And I'm showing you here a trick that is very useful. I will add to the shape layer. This is the wiggle here, not, not this one. I will add a trim path. Okay, that's a normal trim path that does nothing until now. Okay, what I will do, I will keyframe the offset and come to end and say only 20%. Cool. I come to the end of the composition, for example, and move the offset until it goes out. So I will always see 20% of the trim path or the path itself. Okay. But now that's not cool the way it's moving like this. What I will do, I will come to speed and put it zero. Now you have something very cool that I am sure you want to use in very many animations, mainly if you're doing uh, HUDs or you're doing some, uh, you know, spatial animations or doctors, you know, that's the heartbeat, something like this. And this is the wiggle path. And I hope it was very useful for you. Of course, there are so many manipulations that you can come and do, and it will be pretty nice. And I will see you in the next lecture with a preset that will move on its own also and is animated without keyframes. See you then. Hi guys, hope you're enjoying this lesson and hopefully you enjoyed the wiggle path. We will move on and explore a bit the wiggle transform. We want to apply wiggle transform to the text layers and the two shape layers here, which are just lines. Let's transform the text layers into shape layers. This is one. So I have the shape layer. So the AE school online also, we can make it a shape layer. So now we have both of them motion graphic and so. We will take this cool and drop it down with the motion graphic. Actually, what you can do is come and delete them. You don't need them anymore. I will take the first two that is motion graphic and it's layer down there. No, this one. So we'll put this one here and this one, put it under school online motion graphic and shape layer. I'll come to add over here and I will add wiggle transform. Now, if you play my animation, nothing has happened. Why? Because wiggle transform is a bit different from the wiggle path. It has its own transformation. Let's look at it. You have wiggle transform one that is in the shape layer. Of course, it's inside the content. And we have a transform special for the wiggle transform. Inside the transform of the wiggle transform, you have anchor point, position, scale, and rotation. These are not animations, they are not transformation. These are to set the offset for the wiggle. For example, if I take the wiggle position here and give it a 20 pixel only for the vertical and i play the animation now they are wiggling at 20 pixel of course if we put 300 now they wiggle very nicely at 300 it depends what you're doing now usually i don't use this one it has a little meaning and you know people don't get to understand it unless i'm keyframing here and doing a lot of things but what i like is the 20 pixel and they move nicely i will come to the line that is the line under it and give it a position here, not uh, vertical, but horizontal of 20 pixel. Now notice what's happening. The one is moving up and down the motion graphics and the line is moving left and right. It's smooth. It's uh, aristocratic, I would say. Let's go to the AE school online. I'm going to give you an example now that we can add. AE school online is the one on top. 
we will open and we will add a wiggle transform and then we open the transform for the wiggle transform and for example give it a rotation of five degrees only and i give it a position okay i'm gonna do it horizontal just for you to see but vertical will be nicer just 10 pixels now here you are you have the animation it's looking quite nice this one but not so serious you know that for a kids program that would be excellent for an advertisement for kids that would be nice we'll take its line i think that's this line right we apply also wiggle transform and we go to the wiggle transform its transform and give it for example horizontal let's keep it horizontal 20 so the line will go back and forth at 20 degrees right now let's go to the wiggle itself you have the wiggle per second of course you can increase the speed depending on what you're doing of course i'm doing this for the shape layer let's do it for the a school online you can increase the speed and now it's going crazy let's put it back at 0 0.5 and now it's dreamlike and they're moving slowly unfortunately the composition is only five seconds the correlation we can add 100 percent correlation so they are very smoothly moving and they are correlated to each other the movement okay temporary phase we don't care about it and the random seed also so it's actually this is all about this is all about the wiggle transform the concept is you can decide what you are transforming and how you can give them offset on the position scale and rotation and it will go continuously without keyframes of course you can come and do more animations for example if you take here the wiggle you can keyframe the position at 10 and then go two seconds down the line that will do and keyframe it at 50 for example it's not gonna look good just to show you and when it's playing so it starts growing the motion uh how it's going left and right a bit faster fine guys thanks very much for listening this is about the wiggle transform see you in the next lecture hi guys and welcome to this lecture we are going to explore a bit about the repeater the repeater has many applications it applies only for shape i had a question once trying to apply the repeater to text the repeater only is applied to shapes this is an effect of shape we want to explore the repeater and we want to understand how to create repeats we have our first example here where we open a circle and then we have another one where we open a square and try to make you know kind of swipe to change screen for example and we are going to use all the functions of a repeater let's start let's create a new composition <clears throat> doesn't matter the name because we will delete it later and let's create a circle i will just make a circle in the middle of anywhere and uh, i will come to the ellipse go to transform and put it in the middle of its layer hence in the middle of the composition let's add the repeater we will come to add and we have the repeater just here and by default the repeater has three copies so it will repeat three times you can increase this for example we can make it uh, 12 and you have the offset the offset let's make it minus six to show you so it has offset minus six on the left side you can count them and the rest including the original on the right side or minus six on the left side and the rest is on the right side you can make it any figure you want minus three for example to see how it goes we will put it to zero then they are separated with 100 pixels that's because in the transform repeater you have 100 pixel in the position what does it mean 100 pixel this is under the transform repeater one it means repeat 12 times and each separated with 100 pixel from the previous one of course so the first one the original comes in its position the second one comes at 100 pixel from the previous one and the third one 100 pixel from the previous one that's how it works if you give it a bit of scale you will notice how it works the first one is at the original scale and then this one is eight percent or 108 percent from the previous one and the third one is also eight percent bigger than the previous one and so on until the last one 
so we'll put back this to 100 so this is the job of the repeater it does not repeat the first shape all the way it repeats according to the parameters here and it repeats according to the shape that is before you notice that they went in one line here fine i will go up to my ellipse and move the ellipse above like this okay and you notice the anchor point of the ellipse is just here and we can put this at zero so they are all on top of each other then we start rotating or giving it a rotation so notice it's rotating 25 degrees from the previous one if we have 12 and we want to make a full rotation then it will obvious that we have 360 divided by 12 which will make it 30 so these are 30 degree from each other let's say this one 18 now they are overlapping each other if I come, I change the rotation here, I make it smaller. You can see that at a certain point, I have the 18 of them appearing. I can make 360 divided by 18, and here you are. This is pretty cool. Let's animate a bit the number of copies. If I put here number of copies zero, that's the first keyframe. And after 20 frames, for example, make it 18. Now, you notice you have a very smooth animation and a very cool one. So it can turn all around. Of course, you could have used as, uh, rectangles, I don't know, lines, whatever. But the most important is that you learn that you can animate the number of copies and sometimes it's a pretty good animation. Let's bring the timeline here and play it. Here you are. So this is the concept of the repeater. You will come to the repeater and give a certain offset and you do your animation or the movement from the ellipse path or the transform ellipse so that is our first animation and it's quite cool let's add something here if i come to size for example i can keyframe the size here and uh, make it zero maybe cool and then come back when they are all appearing make the size 50 again i don't know if you're doing the right one not bad we can move the size here cool so depending on what you want you can really make this animation pretty cool fine let's use now a double repeater and understand how it works i will delete the shape layer i will come and create a rectangle and put the rectangle the way i want shift will do here and then i will come to the transform repeater and make the rectangle position zero zero according to its layer now take the, la the layer all together and put it just here okay i will introduce a repeater i will choose the layer i always like to put the repeater in the content not inside the rectangle that's because it can go inside the rectangle path one and rectangle it sometimes it's confusing just put it here if you have too many layers then you can pre-compose let's add the repeater here and what i would like to do is to open the repeater and give it for example six copies or seven copies i think that's not enough let's make 13 copies cool or 12 will do fine we come to the uh, transform repeater and i want to increase the 100 just a bit to make it just hit the end of the composition here fine cool so now i have my repeater i can animate the number of copies i'll click here make it zero come after 20 frames or so and make it like we said 12 yep so i have this animation cool now i want also to duplicate down there so what i will do i will add another repeater that will come under the first repeater and remember we did this in complex shapes so this repeater 2 is going to affect repeater 1 and rectangle 1 of course it's going to work on the rectangle 1 let's come over here and take the, the number of copies and make them seven only but now we are going to come to the transform and put this one to zero and put this one to 100 i guess or something more okay here you are something like this i guess we have too many copies let's uh, remove one copy six will do cool so now i will also animate here so it comes it opens it's gonna also open this is zero and go to so many frames here okay make it seven or six like we said so now i have a cool animation where it opens 
fine of course what i will do is to come to the shape layer press shoe select the keyframes press f9 and uh, make it more uh, you know interesting let's press Control and shift and here you are it's quite cool like this fine now this you can use it as a brick screen so it comes in it wastes a second so i'm gonna copy this to, up. so i'm gonna copy these two keyframe Control c Control v maybe put them here then i want it to come out i can also duplicate the keyframes i will take the first keyframes and duplicate them there so now here you are you have your animation and it retrieves that's pretty cool there is another method to remove them and i want to work on it so i will delete these keyframes so it just opens and i will come to the repeaters and look at transform repeater one and you have start opacity and end opacity i will keyframe start and end on this side and i come here i will make them zero percent okay so let's look at our animation and it goes out fine this is cool you notice how they're coming out and then if i shift these then i have even a nicer animation where they come out you know in a certain way of course you can come and do the same but you have to eliminate these ones this start and end opacity in repeater 2 let's delete these ones and go to repeater 2 at this stage here open the transform keyframe the start and end opacity and come after some time make them both zero so it has changed somehow direction and let's shift this no let's shift the lower ones here you are so it changes directions so this is very interesting this you can use to break screen you can use it also as a track mat and remove videos and swipe in and swipe out and stories like this you know break line fine now that we have done this in the next lecture what we are going to do is to work on the repeater uh, this one and create these uh, shapes where you have burst elements and see exactly how we'll do it is also teach us how to use all the animations possible inside a repeater thank you very much for listening i will see you in the next lecture hi guys and welcome to this new lecture in this lecture we want to learn how to create burst elements just like this it's quite cool quite nice and you can use them as fireworks or you can use them in your composition or to create some uh, or to give more uh, style or animation or dynamism to your text and your shape layers right, let's start our uh, animation here let's stop this one we go to composition we create a new composition let's call it comp 4 or 3 it doesn't really matter in the project you will have this composition so later on i will delete this one let's create our first rectangle we come almost in the middle press shift and we have our rectangle there's different ways to create that rectangle but i will go with this way so here we make it zero and zero so it's perfectly in the middle and its own anchor point is also in the middle you can see fine let's animate this rectangle using the rectangle path we will keyframe the size and the position come over here let's remove its fill and we make it no fill at all and we have a stroke that's cool and the position here we want it to go up over here that's very fine and the size we wanted to end for example at the zero zero size or the same size absolutely the same size but we start at zero this is the size let's go to the next keyframe and make the size for example 80 just to make it nice so now our rectangle will come up and go full we need to remove it best way to remove it in this case is using the stroke which is here we keyframe the stroke at no we keyframe the stroke at 10 and after 15 frames we make the stroke zero here we have a nice animation for a rectangle that comes in and out here you are you can also adjust it here maybe you make it 25 so it comes big and disappears so you can see it cool now we can add a repeater come to the shape layer we can come to this add and add a repeater adding the repeater here we have three copies of the repeater we don't want let's make them eight copies that will be cool to start with and in the transform repeater let's forget about the position 
put it to zero go to rotation and say 360 over 8 because i don't know how much is 364 over 8 i think it's 45 oh great guess let's right and here you are you have your first burst element cool so now having our first burst element what we can do we can do more we double uh, we control d and we create a new element let's move it in time like this that's pretty good and we come to content we open the keyframes and we notice we have a wrong keyframe here we adjusted that's the stroke but it really doesn't matter now what shall we do here we come from this instance let's play it solo come here this is coming in what i will do i'll just remove the link put this one at two and at 100 and come to the next one so it's two 100 we are going to make it also two and 100 now notice what's happening here we didn't change anything in the size just close and comes out using the stroke of course you can take all this and add an easy ease the same you can do with the bottom layer you can add an easy ease f9 you can go and play with the graph as you wish but i prefer not to play with the graph for this lesson because it will complicate things for you here you are you have your two coming up and in and you have your burst they are not exceptional but they do the job let's create and duplicate a new layer duplicating the new layer we press u we have the position what are we gonna do here now it's up to you you can choose let's play it solo is the same as the other one now it's starting very thick let's go to the stroke if i press u u i can see my stroke here which is a pretty thick let's make it thinner let's make it only eight and then you have the stroke coming in and we are going to go to the repeater down there where is the repeater transform a repeater the number of copies let's make them 18 and instead of 45 we're going to make 360 over 18 because i don't know how much is this let's play the animation and see solo of course wow that's very nice and here you are you have three of them now if you unsolo one two three cool fine let's take the last one what shall we do with the last one so we have one two three not bad we duplicate for layer four we come here and we open the keyframes let's give it a fill give it that fill cool let's solo it and we have absolutely nothing we are going to press alternate and double click so we have let's say 80 that's pretty nice and over here also another 80 we remove this one and put 80 80 will work fine so now we have it coming in it starts from zero nothing okay it's not starting from zero nothing it's starting from 80 i will link this one and put it at zero and it goes big cool what you want to do now is to take the position on this keyframe and make it come out of the screen now you have four of them coming very nicely all not together here you are one two let's unsolo cool so now you have so many of them i will take all this layer i will say ctrl c ctrl v and i have new four layers that will come in fine i will take this four layer move them here and you have now a magical animation that comes in maybe it's sequence so what we will do is to take this one here move this one over here and play with them the way you like and things will happen and it will be very beautiful the way you like to do it you're free to do it the way you want here you are we have done the animation for the repeaters in five minutes we have done all this work of course you can come and tweak it and make it much nicer than i have done actually what i have worked alone was very nice but since i'm explaining to you it seems i forgot a few things now i love this work and uh, we forgot to add the rectangle that i love mostly you know it's all there and uh, here you are the rectangle i love mostly is the empty rectangles that go very small cool this is how to use the repeater this is how to do bursts and if you notice in six minutes while explaining to you i did all this so when you take your time and do beautiful things it will work for you fine this is done and i will see you in the next lecture with more shapes and more work on shapes so you can become an expert in shapes see you then hi guys in this lecture i want to bring to your attention 
the use of the Bezier path here and how to create Bezier shapes. We are used to come to the toolbar, click on the rectangle tool or any other shape tool and keep the Bezier path off and create our shape. Notice that when we create a shape like this, it's called a parametric shape, it has eight corners or eight uh, delimiters here. And in our shape layer, a rectangle, for example, is created and a rectangle path is created that has size, position, and roundness. And you can animate these ones. But if you use the Bezier path and use also rectangle, if you click and drag, you notice first of all that you have four corners and one of them is big. These corners are called vertex corners or vertex points. Now in the shape layer, what you have is rectangle one and you don't have rectangle path one, you have just a path one and inside there is a path. Now this is pretty good. So we created a parametric shape here with size, position and roundness and here we just have a path. But if you click on path, you can come using your selection tool and drag the points. You are just animat animating a path. This is exactly like a mask. By animating this pa path, you notice that you have quite some power to create certain shapes. Of course, it works with the rounded rectangle, ellipse, and all of them also. Fine, so how do we animate this Bezier shape? You will use the path. For example, if I keyframe the path here, go few frames, and then using my selection tool, I can come and double click to now change the path. You know, the line here is a full line. This is the line that is used, or this is the free mode that is used to animate path or change the path. If you run your animation now, let's make more changes. If you run your animation now, you can see that it has changed completely. It goes from one state to another state. This is exactly like path, but also you can come to the path and using your animation tool, just click on the path itself and you will also be able to animate it or change it the way you would like. Fine. Now, these are the animations using path, which are different from using parametric shapes. If you double click on a layer, on a path shape, you also have the free tool, but now you notice you are uh, changing or modifying the shape itself. You notice here the scale has changed and maybe also the rotation could change. So you have the option of working with a shape to change it or to uh, rescale it and rotate it, or you have the option to work with the path itself and you do the changes required. What is beneficial about this? There is something called morphing shapes, which is quite nice. Let's uh, create a rectangle with the Bezier here. We create a simple rectangle. And then in a second layer, and I want to put them in the same layer just to make sure that we are you know, quite clear about it. Let's create a, an ellipse tool and we drag and create it as simple as this. The ellipse tool here presents even more. If you double click on the path, you can uh, modify the path, but also if you choose the path, select the path here, you have now immediately some busy handles that can change the ellipse and make it, you know, a different shape. Fine. Let's go to this path. This is a rectangle and we open it. We go to the path and simply we press Ctrl C to copy the path. We come to the ellipse and we go to the path and we Ctrl V. Now notice how it has jumped. Actually, the ellipse became a uh, rectangle like the one we have copied the path of. If you now, if you had keyframe, let's keyframe first and then go forward and now paste it. You notice now the ellipse is morphing into the rectangle. You can take the rectangle and just now pull it off and here you are you have a simple animation of one morphing into the other so i wanted to bring this to your, to your attention the most important here that you will be creating shape path or bezier path or bezier shapes i like calling them like this for no you know just to make sure that uh, there is no confusion and you can manipulate its points just like a mask and you create some different shapes in the case of ellipse here if you come to the ellipse itself, for example, we come to the path of it and you click on one point, you have the Bezier handles that you can move around. Of course, if you had keyframed just over here, for example, 
we can keyframe and go back you notice what's happening from this shape to this shape here you are so this is your simple explanation about the bezier and how to use the bezier path it's not much but it has a lot of use and somehow you have sometimes you have to make sure that you are not confusing each one of them now you have the rectangle here if you draw a parametric rectangle for example we take a rectangle we don't have a bezier and we draw just parametric that's a normal one and we come to the rectangle and rectangle path we can still convert this one to convert to bezier path here you are now the rectangle itself it became a bezier path that you can animate or uh, actually you can change as a bezier path now notice that it still have the four handles also this one has all the handles thanks very much for listening i hope this was useful i hope you pay attention and you're not confused when you're creating a bezier path or a parametric shape see you in the next lecture